Okay, I'm going to go over these relatively quickly. There is information within the slides for you to read. Uh, I'll obviously put the slides, make the slides available to you, uh, as well as other sources for you to take advantage of. So I'm really just going to hit the highlights, just the absolute basics for you to remember. Um, my three pieces are the Ikenga, the shrine figure that is uh, a work from the um, Igbo people uh, located in Nigeria. Um, the Elephant Mask, which is a work of the uh, Bamalike people in Cameroon. And um, the Portrait Mask, which is from the Baole people in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast. Uh, so we have two masks here. We'll have another um, two or three masks next class. So it's really important that you have the masks very distinct in your uh, in your head that you do not mix them up because they are all very very different and serve very different purposes. Uh, so the first thing that uh, you know the um, the Ikenga is from Nigeria, right? And so you should be able to find Nigeria on a map. Again, we're not studying these works from Africa by country, uh, but we are you know we are studying them by culture. But still, you need to know where these different cultures are located, and so Nigeria is here. Um, so the thing that you'll definitely need to remember about the shrine figure is the following. The word Ikenga means basically kind of power of the right hand. Um, and you want to think about, and you'll notice that in, in the images that we have of the different Ikenga, um, they will be holding something in their right hand, something, uh, that's associated with their particular status or place in life. Um, our Ikenga figure here, which is here, is more abstracted than the other Ikenga fig figures that we will see, but they all share similar qualities. Number one, they're all holding something in their right hand. You might want to think about, okay, so why right hand? It's because the right, you know, obviously for most people, the right hand is the, do you know, the right side is the dominant side. And that is the hand in which you would hold the thing that you use to make your way in the world, whether that's a sword or, a, you know, or some kind of um, farming instrument or some or something else. So, so that's one. Two, they always have horns. Okay, we can see horns here, horns here, horns here as well. Um and three, that they are personal shrines. So they are they are shrines to your own personal power. They're not about connecting you to the gods uh, or to the divine so much as a shrine to your own personal skills and abilities in life. Um, and so and so you want to pay homage to those powers and to those skills and those abilities. So it's um, so it's very much, you know, kind of it's not ex I wouldn't call it exactly like self praise, but it's uh, honoring your own um, abilities, your own powers, your own skills. And that's a really important, um, uh, important part a p important t thing to do because uh the more you honor those skills that you have and those those powers that you have and those abilities that you have uh the more likely you are to re remain successful or you know get success okay so it's not really to yourself so much as to the skills that you have if that makes sense um so they are personal shrines they are personal shrines they are about individual achievement okay so um there is a video here for you to watch uh on the in in the presentation so make sure that you do that i'm moving on uh our next work is the elephant mask which is uh in cameroon the bemalike pe people in cameroon and you'll notice it is right next to nigeria right here so uh so it's called the elephant mask so you can kind of see how okay so you can see a suggestion of the shape of the elephant with the trunk and with the ears here uh these are the masks in context they are worn by high ranking men high-ranking men in order to associate themselves with the power of the king. They are worn only on specific occasions celebrating, <coughs> excuse me, celebrating the king or celebrating uh, some large, uh, you know, 
ritual events. They're not worn all the time. So, and th so they're only worn very rarely and only by very high ranking males, high ranking males. Okay. Uh, you'll see that we, we have just the mask, but it also involves an entire costume, including a headdress and, you know, and, 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 and cl other clothing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so here's, this is not ours, but this is another one. Um, so it's all about associating yourself with the king. You know, if you're one of these high ranking men, you want to be associated with the king. And in the process of associating yourself with the king, you are, um, um, honoring the king and bolstering his prestige and, um, increasing his, uh, his good reputation while associating yourself with him in that process. Uh, the important animals, obviously elephant, but also leopard. Uh, you will see kind of diamond shapes throughout all of the different elephant masks and the diamond shapes are supposed to be reminiscent of the spots of a leopard. Uh, the colors have different symbols, uh, symbolism associated with them. You should just be aware of that. You can go back and look at that yourself on your own time. Um, so, uh, with respect to, uh, let me go through, you can read through this yourself. I'm going to hit the other ideas here, uh, which is that, it, of course, it's going to be a great honor to be able to wear uh, an elephant mask and perform an elephant mask. Um, the idea here is that the king, the fawn, F-O-N, F-O-N, the king is understood to be able to have been able to transform himself into either an elephant or a leopard. Uh, those two animals in particular are associated with power. Um, so make sure that you read all of this information as well uh, and watch this video. I'm moving on to the last piece, which is the uh, portrait mask uh, from the uh, Baule people in the Cote d'Ivoire, so the Ivory Coast, which of course is located right here. So we've had a lot of work here. So there's Ivory Coast, there's uh, Ghana, there's uh, Nigeria, there's Cameroon. So we're, we're doing a lot of stuff on the west coast of Africa. Um, so the one thing that we need to remember about this work in particular is that it is made to depict a particular woman a particular person, okay, and and woman in this case, and um, and we see our contextual um, image that we have, you know, the actual mask that is meant to depict this particular woman worn by, um, our, war, but he she does not wear it. Uh, uh, the mask is not worn by her. The mask is worn by a dancer of the mask, which is always going to be a man we'll find that in all the masks that we study in, uh, in Af from our study in Africa, except for one, which we haven't gotten to, all the masks are worn and performed by men, even if they depict women, okay? There's one exception, which we'll get to, okay? So this is a mask specifically honoring her, honoring her. She is uh, a member likely of, uh, of a dance troupe, uh, not to wear that particular mask, but for a, for a different kind of dance. And so this is a mask that was commissioned in order to honor her, her great, her great dancing. Okay. We'll saw, see that all these portrait masks uh, have horns, right? Uh, which are kind of just, which are purely decorative, right? Uh, so it's really important. It's for a specific woman. Um, and here are some others. They're not supposed to be realistic images. And again, these are very only specific women who are very well respected and honored uh, get these masks. Um, you can read through this information yourself, which you should. And you should also watch this video, which is from an AP Institute. So when teachers are learning how to teach art history, they go to summer AP Institutes to learn about all the different works. And this is a video from an AP Institute. So you'll learn what the teachers learn. Okay. That's all I've got for you. So make sure to go back and read the presentation and watch the additional um, resources.